Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Mike's Road Trip. Get off the road! All right. Hi, I'm Mike of Mike's Road Trip. On this episode, I'm just outside of Wickenburg, Arizona, which is about 70 miles northwest of Phoenix. And this is an area that is rich in gold mining history. So I thought it would be fun to come out here and check out some of the old gold mines and ghost towns. Now, some of these destinations I'm going to require a four-wheel drive. And as you can see behind me, I have a pretty sweet rig. Thanks to the folks at Raptor Series Automotive Accessories for loaning me this sweet rig as well as sponsoring this video. So come along with me and let me show you around. I started this trip heading north out of Wickenburg on Constellation Road. About 10 miles in, you'll start to see gold mine tailings and ghost town remains. So the first place I wanted to stop, I noticed there were a lot of no trespassing signs posted. And as I got closer, I noticed some people were building a little shed or something. I think that with gold prices as high as they are now, you have a lot of people who are reclaiming these claims that have been abandoned for all these years, and they're trying their, their luck at it. Right behind me, uh, there are actually two mines, and I'll fly the drone so you can get a close-up look, but those are just, I think, tailings from an underground mine. So behind me is the Monte Cristo mine, which I believe hit its peak around 1925. A number of people have tried to mine here over the years with varied success, but uh, it's actually been abandoned here for over 40 years now. Not much remains, but there are some foundations and other types of things, remnants here. I read that at one point, 2,500 people lived in this area, this camp or city, if you will. You can tell there was a fire here, that's for sure. I did actually read as well that, I don't remember when, maybe back in the 70s or 80s, that uh, there were some vandals that came out here and burned this, I guess it was maybe a full-fledged town. So I think a lot of that stuff burned down, unfortunately. It's fascinating to come across places like this and then go back and read about its history and stuff. I mean, it's just... It's remarkable what those old timers used to do. That's why I think there's so many people out searching for gold today, because the, um, the methods have improved so much that as well as these old timers mind, they still left a lot behind. No idea what this room is or building. Looks like someone cut this ladder off just at the right height. It's a little sketchy right in here. This is all concrete. I think this is a winch system, not a generator. I wish I could rig something up with a light and send it down there to see what's all the way down in that shaft. So I have no idea what year or make this car is behind me, but I'm guessing it's a Plymouth, but that's just a guess. So if you happen to know, I'd love to hear your comments below. It looks like it has suicide doors, so that could be a giveaway for you automotive enthusiasts out there. This is the Gold Bar Mine, which isn't too far from Monte Cristo. It has some newer looking no trespassing signs, and while there's an RV there, it didn't appear that anyone was living in it. You'll see all kinds of junk and artifacts in this area. I even stumbled across this old bus in a ravine.
State mining inspectors guessed that there could be as many as 100,000 abandoned mines in Arizona, and it's estimated that Arizona mining history dates back more than 3,000 years. As Native Americans mined minerals as early as 1000 BC. Well, I'm at the end of the road, unfortunately, and uh, I only have about an hour of sunlight left and I've got to find a place to camp. I really want to do this hike. This is the Hacienda River Preserve, I think, and um, I, I think seasonally there's running water and stuff there, so I'd love to hike there, but I have no idea how far of a hike it is, so I'm going to have to find a place nearby to camp out and then maybe try it tomorrow. I didn't want to camp in the wash as I preferred having a view, so it took a little while to find a flat spot suitable for camping. One of the things I love about uh, camping, and I'm sure you do too, it, that's having a fire. Uh, but sometimes it's a pain to dig a hole and find some rocks and make sure you're in a safe area. So I just got this product. It's called a pop-up pit. Um, I've never used it. I'm going to do it for the first time. I thought this was the perfect opportunity to, on this camping excursion. Uh, apparently, you just pull it out, pop it up, throw some wood in there, and you're off and running. So we'll see. <laughs> I bought this crappy wood at uh, the store for like eight bucks. I didn't know if there would be any wood around here, so, but I, I stopped by, uh, or I was driving by a campsite and they left a bunch of uh, mesquite behind and this is good firewood. I picked up a sandwich in Wickenburg at a place called the Local Press. I highly recommend it. Anyway, the bag is gonna come in handy to help start this fire. Well, at least the cheap wood makes good kindling. It didn't quite pop up, but it was pretty easy. Had I read the instructions, I probably could have gotten it put together a little faster. It's been a rough night. The wind has just been howling all night. <laughs> Well, I made it back to the Hacienda River Wilderness area, and uh, as I left the 
trailhead you can see that somebody has a homestead or something with some livestock which is really in the middle of nowhere but you can see this wash that I'm walking down is a little damp so this is certainly a feeder for um, the Hacienda River when there's rain it is just a beautiful day. It's no wonder so many people come to Arizona in the winter. It's still early February. And uh, I don't know, I'm guessing it's probably 65, 70 degrees out right now. Oh, it's a beautiful day for hiking. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch of minnows swimming around here. Yeah, oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Ooh, thirsty. Wow, this would be an amazing place to go horseback riding through this canyon and through the water would be so much fun. Well, I could easily spend the day out here. It is just beautiful. I haven't seen a single person, even on the off-road area. Only occasionally I would see an off-road vehicle. Very few people. So if you really want a great escape, this is it. I just walked by those sheep and I think they must be lonely or something. <laughs> you can hear them crying out. As I get farther away, they get louder. <laughs> so I'm gonna head back the way I came and my next stop I think is gonna be a Box Canyon just outside of Wickenburg. So I've never been there, so we'll see if I can manage to find it. So I'm just driving along on this remote dirt road and I come across something that I'm not sure is creepy or cute. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Well, I'm heading to Box Canyon, but it is slow going. This is a very rugged four wheel drive road much more so than Constellation. It says I have 3.2 miles and it's gonna take about 25 minutes. This road would probably be better in a Jeep than this huge truck. Oh my gosh. My hands are shaking. I just had to do a 20 point turn to, uh, to turn around in this small space because I met some guys in some, uh, you know, those off-road vehicles. And um, I said, can I make it down to the riverbed? And they said, ah, probably not. I'm like, okay, thank you. So I turned around and I'm gonna go back the way I came, which is a long way, but at least I, they say, go the way you know. But while I was making this 20, 25 point turn right on the edge here, I discovered a cave. Now, I don't know if it's an old mine shaft or what, but I've got a little flashlight, so let's go have a look. Oh, it smells terrible. I think this is a sign that there was gold here. Holy shit. 
shit. These are some seriously long mine shafts. I'm not gonna venture down, but man, this is pretty interesting. Unlike most mine shafts, uh, they're supported with timber, and uh, this is just solid rock. So, actually, if one wanted to venture down one of these shafts, I think it would be relatively safe, but I'm not going to do it. I'm here by myself. Not a smart thing to do. Ooh, smells terrible in there. I think somebody's used it for a toilet. Okay, well, the long, arduous drive back to Wickenburg. This is one of those four low hills. <laughs> That had my heart going. It was actually much easier than I had anticipated. And probably it didn't hurt that I have this souped up suspension on that rig. But if you like uh, off-roading and overlanding as much as I do, visit my friends over at Raptor Series. RaptorSeries.com. They have everything you need to outfit your rig. Everything you've seen in this video, like the tent, the awning, the uh, portable refrigerator, the steps, the running boards, the uh, winch, the lights, I mean, the chair, they have it all. Oh yeah, they even have all the suspension parts. So visit my friends over at Raptor Series. Well, one lesson learned on this trip is don't trust Google. I cannot believe the way it had me come here to the Box Canyon hideout. That was a really uh, sketchy trip. Um, probably wasn't able to capture the sketchy parts, but uh, I'm in this beautiful area, but I actually don't know how the heck to get down to the actual box canyon. I'm up above it. I was just driving by and I saw this uh, dead saguaro and I swear it looks like a man with two eyes and everything, but maybe it's just me. What do you think, am I crazy? Well, good morning. The sun just started coming up. Well, this morning I'm camped out just outside of Stanton, Arizona, which is another very well-known uh, uh, gold mine and ghost town. Uh, so I'm going to finish getting packed up and uh, we'll take you on over there with me. I suppose Stanton is not the ghost town it once was, but it's still kind of cool to go out there and check out some of the old uh, buildings and artifacts. Um, I also learned that Charlie Stanton, the founder of the town, was once the richest man in Arizona. Didn't know that. 
Uh, also, I actually discovered Stanton by watching one of those Gold Rush shows with uh, Freddie Dodge and his buddy Juan. They're gold recovery experts who go out and help struggling miners, and they were out in this area. So I think that's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, that's a quick look at Stanton, one of a former ghost town now turned RV park. Well, I'm not sure what this place is, but it's uh, in Congress. And I thought it was kind of cool, so I thought I'd stop. So I saw this guy who obviously uh, works here or something, and I asked him, I said, what is this place? And he said, ah, you know, just kind of a hobby for the owner. Uh, apparently the owner's kind of making this into a little bit of a ghost town and uh, but he supplements it through his lumber mill so they mill a lot of different types of lumber uh, custom orders as well so uh, it's kind of a neat place I would definitely recommend stopping here oh he also displays uh, some of his cars here and has a couple of woodies and uh, I guess he's building a um, uh, a little gallery for his Harley Davidson. So, started. Well, this is where it all started. Gold, that is. This is Vulture City and the Vulture Mine, where Henry Wickenburg first discovered gold. Well, this is the place that Henry called home. Well, wherever there's gold, there's a brothel. I was here about 10 years ago and this place was truly a ghost town. Now it has been really nicely renovated or restored I should say and these buildings are all authentic but they are now restored for future generations to admire. Well, if you're into the ghost towns, definitely check out Vulture City. If you prefer the off-roading and overlanding, head down Constellation Road and also check out the Box Canyon. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more road trip travel videos. And hey, I'd like to thank Raptor Series for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions about this trip or their rig, leave a comment. Be happy to help. Hey, thanks again. So until next time, we'll see you on the road.